Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 33 of Direwolf20's FTB Revelation series. Uh, just replaced my glass down here with quite clear glass from Ender.io, because it was bugging me that I couldn't see behind the behind the wall that clearly. Looks a little bit better, I think, right? I think it looks pretty good. Ah, oh, that's cool. I think it's good. Uh, today's episode, I'd like to start automating ore production, if I can. Uh, and there's probably a few ways to go about doing that. Uh, so two things that we have available to us that might be cool to help get us going would be the following. Um, there's, there's, there's a couple ways we can automate ore production in this pack, right? Um, we can use the builder from RF Tools, right? So uh, our, our RF Tools builder, right? That's a good way to quarry. Uh, and if we got ourselves a quarry card, that would be cool. There's also the quantum quarry from Extra Utilities. Uh, it's okay. There's the Buildcraft quarry, but I don't know about that one. Uh, shape card quarry, that's not terribly hard to get. Uh, and if we want fortune quarry, that gets a little bit, but not terrible. Uh, and clearing fortune quarry is just fortune quarry with glass around it. See, it's probably the one I'm gonna want. Um, though I wouldn't mind checking out the deep dark in this pack and see what that's all about. So what would be involved in getting to the deep dark if we wanted to check that portal out? Um, what other portals exist in this pack? So there's the, there's Aroma's mining dimension. So that's one place that we could set up mining, right? Um, though I don't know that there's any, I, like I, I'm assuming that the mining dimension is just a dimension for mining in, right? Uh, so I don't think that's a big deal. I think Deep Dark would probably be the better place to do mining. Uh, I would think, yeah, Portal to the Void. Oh, Simple Void World, that's cool. We might play with that at some point. You know me, I like my void worlds. When was the last time I did a void base? Let's be honest. Been a while. Excluding excluding Skyblock packs that I've played recently. Right? We'll see. At some point, maybe. Maybe, 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 maybe. We'll see. Um, but yeah, let's do Deep Dark Portal. So that's just, what, nine blocks of compressed? Or eight blocks of compressed? That's an easy enough recipe. I'll take that. Deep Dark Portal. Huzzah! Easy peasy. Where do I want this portal to live? You can just stick you in the corner here, right, buddy? Nobody puts deep dark portal in the corner. Let's check it out. I mean, we have our advanced charge porter in case anything goes crazy. Uh, we can grab a, a couple feral flare lanterns, right? Uh, a little bit of world gen cooking it up right here. Shouldn't be too bad. I like it. Huzzah, all right, neat, all right. So let's actually do, I kind of want to, let's pop home real quick. I want to see where I'm facing when I go into that portal. I don't think it matters what direction I'm facing when I go through the portal, right? I don't think so. But uh, let's be prepared for this, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's check out Eel Deep Dark. Uh, did I bring any torches with me? No, why would I do that? How am I on infinite energy? Where does it show me my current infinite energy? Uh, it's burning down pretty quick. <laughs> I think I just used pretty much all of it. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. Remember, remember, we have a we have an Enderman thing going on, uh, which is which is which is helping with the old infinite energy thing because. Uh, that, that Enderman thing is gonna produce infinite energy cards for me, right? And if I wanted to, I could throw looting on there and that would uh, make things crazy. But I think my goal should be as follows. I'd like to automate uh, probably a couple ways throughout the series that I'll be automating things. I'm gonna start with a builder in the deep dark because that's a pretty good way to start with resource production, but then we're gonna probably wanna ramp it up. So I'm thinking environmental techs in the pack, right? Uh, so we should probably start at some point getting an environmental tech void or controller because those will start allowing me to get lithrite and erodium and chironite and all the different tiers of environmental tech crystals. Uh, we have to basically ramp those up with the void ore miners, right? So we have to get a void ore miner tier one, it generates crystals for tier two, then we get a void ore miner tier two and it generates crystals for tier three. It's a pretty slow process. And unfortunately you can't tick accelerate those things anymore unless this pack, you know, added a config that allows you to tick accelerate, in which case that would be cool. Man, how, how much further do I have to go down here? I don't remember it being this tall. Do, 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 do. 
See how wonky things get when you misclick? I don't remember it being this hard to get down. Oh, there we go. Finally. Whew. That's some good times right there. Okay. Now remember, I do have flight, so there's that. That helps. All right, so I'm thinking first things first. Let's get ourselves a Feral Flare Lantern, or two or three or four or five, uh, and kind of go from there, right? So can you get me a Feral Flare Lantern? It shouldn't be hard. That should be good times. And let's light up an area underneath our dark, deep dark area so we can start, you know, having a little bit of a safety zone. So the deep dark is a cool dimension. Um, it's generally has a little bit higher ore spawns, I think. I think it generally has higher ore spawns. Uh, and then in addition to that, it has a lot of mobs that are dangerous and scary. Um, and generally darkness hurts you, I think. Bastionarad is a thing here, right? Ow! Speaking of monsters and hurting. Light up the area for me, would you, Feral Flare Lantern? That should be relatively cool. So we'll see here like how the Feral Flare Lantern works, right? Like it's lighting up large areas uh, of terrain uh, in an area, right? So like generally in the three chunks around the one that the lantern's in will be lit up. Uh, and if we wanted to, we could even tick accelerate that because that is... Cool. Look at that, lighten up the area. Beautiful, right? So cool. So yeah, as you guys can see, right, we've got the Feral Flare Lantern here. This chunk is pretty well lit up. This one's not, so this one's where I'm going to put another Flare Lantern. And then we'll do the same in this direction. This one's not, so we'll put one here. Oh, I grabbed... I can sneak one more out of this, right? Energy is low, I know. I really need some more infinite booster cards. Those things are the best. So this one's the dark chunk, so this one's the adjacent to the dark chunk. And this should light up our, our our deep dark area pretty well so this is the dark this is the adjacent to the dark and then we should be pretty cool so in a few minutes here we should see a pretty well lit deep dark area right underneath where our portal lets us in at and man look at all those thalmcraft crystals you can just see them everywhere down here can't you this is a nice place to harvest thalmcraft crystals i'm just saying I'm just saying. Notice mobs are a little bit tougher to kill down here, too, in the deep dark. That's a thing you're going to want to be cognizant of. Definitely takes a few more hits than normal, right? Yeah, 20 health. Is that normal? I, I, don't, know how many, I don't know how much health mobs usually have, but... Definitely feels like it takes more swings. Okay, let's go. Speed it up, buddy. I ain't got all day. I got I got mining to do. Let's go. A little tick accelerating to help you light up your chunks. That should be pretty cool. All right, nice. Works out pretty well, right? All right, let's go home and look into... I'm thinking a builder, right? Because uh, I don't know how many quarry options I realistically have, right? There's the Arc Tools Builder. What else do we have by way of quarry? Um, like, Arc Tools Builder I know is a pretty reliable builder. There's the quarry from Buildcraft, but I'm like, eh, I don't know about that one. Uh, what else we got? What else we got? What else we got? Uh, is there anything from Blood Magic or anything like that that can quarry? Blood Magic has... Um, has a ritual that generates a meteor that we can quarry, right? But that's not quarrying, that's generating a meteor that we would then need to quarry with something. So, hmm, what else do we got? What else we got? All right, so I'm thinking RF Tools Builder is probably the path to go. My first question, though, is what kind of quarry card do I want? Do I want a standard quarry card or do I want to go fortune? Like, go big or go home, right? But just note that Fortune has a 600 RF per cost bl per block broken, where it's 300 RF per a normal card. So it's twice as much power to give you Fortune 
What's Silk do? Silk is 900, so that's even worse. That's three times as much power. Uh, so I'm thinking, I'm thinking Fortune. I'm thinking Fortune, right? Yeah, you're reasonable enough. Uh, so let's get ourselves a shape card. Uh, and then you're going to want one of you. And you're going to want one of you. And then you're going to do that, right? And then we'll go Fortune Quarry. So that would be that with a gas tier, huh? Never have enough gas tiers. Luckily, this recipe exists. It makes my life a lot easier. Fortune Quarry card. And then clearing fortune quarry cards so by default the quarry cards what they do is they turn whatever blocks they mine into dirt i don't like that i like it when it leaves a big empty hole in the world i prefer that so if you make a clearing fortune quarry card what it does is it leaves a big empty hole when it breaks a block it, it just leaves emptiness air instead of turning it into dirt uh so that's cool so let's do that and then uh did i make my builder i don't think i did so we should so that would be you and three more of these because I think I made an extra one last episode. Yeah, I did. That's what's up. Dyer's paying attention to what he's been doing. Look at that. So there's that. Uh, let's also get a flux point if we can. Is that doable? Looks like it is. Crafting, crafting, crafting. Flux point. Cool. Let's also get an ender chest or two uh, of color white. That sounds good. I always go white, white, white for my uh, import into the into the network right uh so we're gonna want an importer me import bus that sounds cool do i not have you taught i should me import bus Bip -bip -bip -bip. i have an export bus set up but not an import make the thing hooray and you can just have four acceleration cards in you really we're low on silicon again I should do something about that. He keeps saying and not doing. Yeah, that's cool. And then in addition, real quick, I'll make an ender pouch. All right, so let's get this dude set up. So what I think I want to do is just have a single cable like so, with a importer set up with four acceleration cards. Boom. And then this dude. And when we have the pouch set up, what it means is that anything we put into the pouch will get sucked into the uh, system here. So for example, if I had some granite and we drop it in the pouch, boom, it's gonna get pulled in. And that that is cool. Good times? Good times indeed. All right. So now with that set up, let's go ahead and pop over to the deep dark. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to have the core, the builder feed into the ender chest and all that good stuff. So I decided to come down here and check on my uh, storage crate. And hey, we're doing pretty good. <laughs> we have a lot of ender pearls. <laughs> so that's cool. I got that going for me. Uh, and I can throw some infinity booster cards in here. What do I do with these again? I think I just put them right there. Infinite energy, 6,000 units. Nice. That is cool. Totally, just for the infinite wireless card thingies, having that Woot set up is pretty awesome, right? Um, so let's get our builder up and running now and see what we can't do by way of making an awesome builder setup. Okay. Hooray! So what I'm going to do is just kind of start over here-ish. This looks like a good a place as any. For a builder setup. Now, if I remember correctly, you want the uh, ender chest to go here. And let's see. We probably want to claim this chunk that we're in and chunk load it. Because you know I'm going to forget to do that if I don't do it right away. I'm pretty sure the builder inserts items into the inventory above it, if I remember correctly. Uh, we're also going to want to give this bad boy some power. So do the thing, select a network. Oop. All the juice. Uh, on to activate. I'm probably going to want that. We're probably going to definitely want that. Um, and then let's get our shape card. So to, so to program the shape card, you can either shift right click, but this always confuses me, the dimensions and the offset and all that stuff. You can also specify to void certain blocks. And I'm going to tell it to void all this stuff because I don't want this junk, right? I just want ores. That's it. Just give me ores. I don't care about cobblestone, right? This is not a cobblestone producer. We can make cobblestone on our own if we decide we need to. Uh, the easier way to program this card is right click or shift right click, I think. 
boom. Now select the first corner. So you can do corners uh, to get this thing going. So what I'm gonna do is go about, the, the range on this guy is max 512 by 512. So I'm gonna go about 200 blocks that way and start at that corner. So like right here, we're at 105 on the X. No, it's 60, it's uh, 510 on the Z. So what I'm gonna do is go to about 300 510. And remember Vash Narada, so things get to hurting. 300 510. That seems like a good place, right? Would that be 510? Yeah. So let's start a block or two up from here. That's gonna be your first corner, okay? Now the second corner is gonna be like negative 100 and then 710? How's that sound? Negative 100, 710, roughly. We're getting there. Ow, ow, ow. Let's just get to the 710 point. Flying, flying, flying. Now, technically, because it's 512, it can be bigger than 710, right? Uh, it could be like 910, right? That would be 400 blocks in this direction. Yeah, I think that sounds good. Okay. This is a good enough place as any. So what I'm gonna do is dig straight down to bedrock here. You know the thing you're never supposed to do. Never dig straight down to Minecraft. And uh, I'm gonna go find a good a good spot to click on. Digging straight down. Cause I'm a risky direwolf. Taking all the risks for you guys. Hey, there's bedrock. Now, am I looking at Y level one? Yes. So if I click this, right, and we look at this, we can see it's a shape card solid. The dimensions are 412, 66, 418, and the offset is that, right? And that's pretty cool. So that's going to be a big, large area. Uh, and if you shift right click it, you'll see it's a huge cube, right? That's basically the size we're talking about quarrying out. So that's not too shabby. It's probably easier for me to just teleport home and jump into the deep dark portal than to try and find, um, the, the, to fly to the starting position again. So that should be a very large area that's gonna be quarried out. Um, and that should be cool. And hopefully we are voiding all the things, right? Voiding, voiding dirt and cobble and all that. Uh, I wanted you. So I'm gonna stick this shape card in here and uh, give you a redstone signal. For now, a lever should do. But we're gonna change that up a little bit, boom. So now you're mining, right? And you're getting everything that's not those things I'd said to void. Cool, look at that. That is some good times right there. So now let's set up uh, a wireless, redstone signal. Now we can do it with RF tools. RF tools has a wireless redstone signal, but let's see what else we got for wireless. Wireless redstone. Not a lot, huh? Not what I would call a lot. Okay, so transmitter and receiver is probably what we're gonna want here. Two of you, one of these. with those and one of these okay so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up down here a wireless transmitter we're gonna pop right about there but we're gonna rotate him so that he's like that and then if I click this channel set to one channel set to one they're both channel one now okay uh, and then we can put our lever here and that's cool now, if we pop back into our deep dark, so the transmitter is transmitting on channel one and the receiver is receiving on channel one, okay? So now, all we gotta do is place this receiver next to our quarry 
and we would have a remote on off switch for our mining operations. And that's pretty cool. Not bad at all. So I pop you there, we rotate you, you're channel one. Um, currently outputting nothing, which is why we're not mining. But if we teleport home, and flip this here lever, we should be getting stuff in our chest. Cool? How great is that? Right? And we turn the lever off, and we're getting nothing. Very simple wireless control of our mining operations, right? And you'll notice that our export bus is working the way we would expect it to. We're getting a bunch of ores in here. Now, with that running, how much RF are we draining? A uh, large amount, really, really large amount of RF drain. Really, 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 really big. We want to turn this off right now. So that quarry, while powerful, is really expensive in terms of RF generation. Um, so even so, with our with our with our with our ore processing and our woot farm running, we have a net loss on power, which is bad, right? Uh, with the woot farm off, ore processing can run, and with ore processing off, the woot farm can run. So let's see what we can do to augment our power production for a minute, um, which. Maybe I foreshadowed a little bit at the beginning of this episode by tweaking out this clear glass. Um, what if we were to change up these oil generators? <clears throat> How bad an idea would that be? Would that be cool? Because um, the oil generators are doing 120 RF a tick, right? Um, but canola oil, especially like the uh, empowered canola oil, can also work in a compression dynamo, which I imagine would be a lot faster. Um, we'll just need to see if they can keep up, right? But what if we got like nine compression dynamos instead of oil generators and got them going, right? Um, now, ignition plugs means it only works with refined fuel, so we don't want to do that one, but there might be some other things we want to do with these compression dynamos. But let's get those going. Let's get some kits. Nine kits. Nine kits. Nine of you. Nine of you. And that should be cool. Nine. Perfect. And you're making kits for me? Thanks, buddy. All right. Popping back down. What would be involved if we wanted to switch all this out? Right? Let's sneak inside the wall here and remember how this works. Um, so we've got that. We've got that. Okay. So we're going to need coolant for this, which means that if we're going to be piping fluid into here, uh, let's let's do two things. First off, let's stop you from extracting. Oh, you auto extract, huh? So let's do that. And then presumably you'll burn through all your oil that you've got going on here, I think. I don't think you have a tank, right? I didn't put a tank anywhere in this line. So eventually this oil will, will get used up and we won't waste any oil because that's, you know, what I'm looking to do. Let's also consider getting a tank, right? Can I have a tank of some kind? Um, let's make one of these. You, wow, wow, you filled up really quick, didn't you? <laughs> oh, you know what? It, it filled up from that. Okay, cool. So you are on... I don't want you to insert. I want you to just extract, but not yet. Uh, and then, hey, kits. Can I have an extra one of each? That would be super. Okay, so now we have a large buffer of empowered oil that's gonna be used pretty shortly, okay? Um, so you should be making one more of these kits for me. Great, perfect, thanks. So that's cool. Um, so now that you're all emptied out and looking pretty good, what I probably wanna do is conduits. What I want is not pressurized fluid conduits, but the better version, the ender fluid conduits. Now that needs some vibrant alloys, which did we ever teach you how to make? We did, cool. Sweet, get to work for me, would you? Because I'm a little bit impatient, did I give you a decent, you're double layered, okay. I should probably get the top tier capacitor. That shouldn't be too bad to make, right? Yeah. That'll at least speed this up a little bit more. Cool. 
a little bit more buffer, a little bit more of everything. So let's get some Ender Fluid Conduits. I can upgrade my existing Pressurized, and this is a good way to do it, by the way, because it's, I think it's a lot cheaper to do it this way, unless I'm crazy, but uh, I mean, I might be, might be. We're gonna need more than that, aren't we? Yeah, we're gonna need more than that. Uh, Conduit Binder, did I ever teach you that? I don't think I did. Where am I? Help! I'm lost. Instant fluids, just add under. You know it, buddy. Uh, so we're gonna want conduit binder. So I need you to know how to make that. And I need you to know how to process it into that. Cool. Now I know we're getting real low on craftings here, but that's okay. Redstone furnace, that would be you. So now if I asked for like 20 of you, you're low on gravel. Silly, silly machine. How can you be low on gravel of all things? I know. I need to make a cobble works. Do I not have gravel? I gotta have gravel in here, right? Like, I, it's impossible that I don't have gravel. Am I blind? Am I just not seeing it? That's andesite. Where would gravel be? Dude, do I legit not have gravel? How is that even possible? How in, in the world is that even possible? Let's do that and that. I'll take it. Get me some conduit binders, and now we're cooking. Beautiful. Actually, clear you out because I had you in here, didn't I? Yeah. That's cool. Now, the cool thing about Ender Fluid Conduits is that they can transfer more than one fluid at a time. And that's pretty awesome. Now, do sinks exist in this pack, and can they extract fluids? Uh, I have water... Because sinks are another really good way to generate water. Um, like, I know I have the aqueous accumulator back here, I think, running, right? Um, I have something like that. Igneous extruder, latex processing. There's water coming from somewhere. It's, yeah, this aqueous accumulator. But those are slow. This thing totally works for producing water, right? Like, if I pop you there and I got some conduiting, can you extract... You do. See how that works? So sinks are pretty awesome for that purpose. So what we're going to have is uh, we're going to remove all the conduiting here. Right? And the other thing in theory is that we shouldn't need the on-off control signal stuff um, when we use dynamos for this setup. So let's just remove everything down here that we had. Okay. I don't think we need this anymore. Because dynamos are going to be smart about self-throttling. Where the oil generators are not. Right? Come to me, oil generators. I have to put you somewhere. Okay. Um... Now, how do I want to lay this out so that it looks cool? Because looking cool is definitely a key. Um, I want it to look neat. I want it to look neat, right? Um, if the if the dynamos were here, I couldn't... I'm going to need the dynamos to face this way, I think. So, so very much like we had before. Right? Uh, that should be cool. Now, there's an augment that allows me to put stuff in the front, but that uses up an augment, right? Um, for dynamos. So there's the increases RF generation. We want, we want probably three of those, right? Imagining we're having a maxed out Enderium tier, right? Um, we probably want to... See, I don't want to have to use an augment for this. Allowing insertion and extraction through the coil. That seems blah to me. Uh, RF loss due to flux coil saturation. We definitely want that one. So we want one of each of these. Uh, and then that's about it, right? Um, so actually, yeah, we should be cool here. 
So we can insert in the front and extract out the, yeah, that sounds cool. So what we'll want is basically this. Okay, and then we'll want fluid in the back. Okay, and we're going to remove all these fluid dudes. And then we're gonna place, oh, wrong one. Ender, right? You're not gonna extract, but you're gonna extract on green, but we're not gonna always active you just yet. Okay, and then we're also gonna have the sink here, let's say, and you're also gonna extract on green, okay? So watch what happens when we connect up this guy on insert fluid mode. Okay, you ready? If we set um, let's actually let's disconnect this for a sec. But if we set you to extract always active and you to extract always active and then set this to insert on green, check it out. The water and empowered oil are both filling up, which is cool, right? <laughs> That's pretty awesome, okay? Now you're producing ADR of a tick, which is less than we were producing before, but I'm hoping with the augments, it will be better than it was before, right? That's my expectation, at least, we'll see. It's my hope. Redstone control, we shouldn't have to worry about, right? Now for augments, we want the excitation field limiter, right? So that's just electrum with some lead nuggets, so that's actually pretty easy. Get me like 10 electrum. And lead, we should already have the nuggets for. So that should be like pretty much a done deal, right? Um, excitation field limiter, prevent RF loss due to saturation of oil. Okay, so by, by turning that on, it means that it'll automatically power down the fuel consumption uh, of empowered oil as the internal buffer fills up, right? So we're at 98850. Um, and we could speed this up if we wanted to just prove out. So as this fills up, see how the power output drops to the point where it gets to zero? And now we're not using any fuel. Okay. 99850. We haven't used any fuel. So no fuel usage at all. Um, and it's just not going to use any because we put that in there. So that's pretty cool. I like that. That's what we want, right? Um... Now, uh, you are connected to the to the vibrant block there. So what I'm probably gonna wanna do is run some energy conduiting straight down and along this line. That seems like a smart move by me. Now you should be draining your RF out of there, and that's looking pretty good, right? So now to complete this build, all we have to do um, is I want you to not be on extract. It doesn't really matter, but and now everybody should be getting empowered oil and water. Cool, right? And they should all be producing RF. Probably less than we were producing before, but that's okay. Eh, we're doing all right. We're doing all right. It's not terrible, right? Yeah. You know why? Because we're not we're not ore processing. That's why. Or processing's off. That's why we're we're doing okay. Um, now for augments that increase um, dynamo speed, we want auxiliary transmission coil. This increases power generation RF per tick, right? So we're gonna want nine of those, nine of those. Okay, so at this point we're at 160 RF a tick. This is exactly the same power level that we had when we were doing it with the oil generators. The thing is though, oil generators are not upgradable. These guys can still get two more upgrades for auxiliary transmission coil, which I think will bring us up to a pretty significant amount. Now at this point we don't need you anymore, or you, or you, or this whole 
silly setup of power wiring and such. Because we've got um, the smart thing going on here, right? So we've got we've got this thing and we've got these guys and they turn off once they are power saturated, right? So we'll throttle automatically these guys. So now what we need to have is a couple more kits uh, and I would like you to learn today how to make Signalum and Resonant kits, okay? Auto crafting system, would you be so kind as to learn how to make those things for me? Because that would be super. Uh, put you on, so we need to learn how to make this and we need to learn how to make this. And that might require a few things. All right, so I'm teaching this guy the uh, alloy smelter approach to Lumium and Signalum, uh, so that hopefully this isn't too crazy. Uh, and then you need Lumium gears. And then you also need to know how to make Enderium. Enderium might be a little bit trickier. Um, Enderium base is that. Okay, I can, I can pull that off, right? I think so. Uh, get you Enderium base, and that's sand, cool, and then that's you, cool. So it's going to real quick fill up my alloy smeltery in terms of what it's allowed to make, but that's okay. And I also wound up pulling some recipes out of here that I wasn't using at the moment, uh, just so I could get these working, okay? So if I wanted like nine of these kits, we need blizz powder, right? So that's one thing we're gonna absolutely need, blizz powder. Uh, blizz powder, we can make in the pulverizer with permafrost from quark, but a really low chance. Uh, or blizz rods. Hmm, oh, here, hmm. We should, we should maybe even think about deep mob learning for that. We really should. We're gonna have to find some blizzes. That would be cool. Um, or we can do the liquid XP thing, which works. Ish. Do we want to do that approach? I don't know that I have any snowballs, to be honest with you. Yeah, maybe we need to figure this out next episode. So let's do this. Let's wrap up this episode, and we'll come back next time, and I'm going to figure out how I'm going to get cryothium dust. I can either uh, do some deep mob learning stuff, right, um, and get into that a little bit, and that would be cool, right? Uh, or I could... Um, export experience orbs into a magma crucible that'll make essence of knowledge that we can then use in a fluid transposer to make those things. That's another approach. And FYI, uh, our woot farm over here, which I think I turned off recently, is producing those experience doohickeys. Cool. So we're actually getting a healthy amount of those from that farm. So that's cool. And man, nebulous hearts, we're getting a lot of drops from this thing. And it's off at the moment, even. <laughs> so, I mean, we're not getting drops now, but that's like the amount of drops that we got while it was running, which was pretty crazy. All right, so for now, Dell 20 signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. We'll come back next time and we'll figure out what the plan of action is. Might use the experience thingies from actually editions that are dropping from the Woot Mob farm, or might set up deep mob learning. We'll see. For now, Dell 20 signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Take it easy. <laughs>